Hi guys, in this video I'll be discussing speciation and isolation. And finally, a summary. Organisms can be grouped into species, and as we know, a new species develops when populations of the same species become so different that they can no longer reproduce to produce fertile offspring, and this is called speciation. In this video, I'll be discussing both speciation and isolation. So now let's look at an example of speciation. So you start with a common ancestor. In this case, the common ancestor is from the cat family. Over time, due to natural selection acting differently on the different populations, the two populations separate into species. In this case, a lion and a cat. And these are two separate species. And we know they're separate species as they can't interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Alfred Russell Wallace is a prominent scientist who heavily influenced our understanding of speciation. Alfred Russell Wallace was one of the early scientists working on speciation and his observations led to our understanding of speciation. And that is that speciation starts with a common ancestor and populations of these common ancestors split up and these populations acquire genetic variation. And that leads to something called evolutionary divergence. This gives us the species we see today. So now we understand that speciation can occur due to isolation. And this is a separation of individuals within a species. So I mentioned that isolation is a separation of individuals within a species. But how does this occur? Well, geographic barriers, for example, floods and earthquakes, can isolate individuals within a species. For example, individuals may be stranded on either side of the barrier. As the individuals on either side of the separation can't reproduce, this may eventually lead to speciation. So due to the barrier, these individuals can't reproduce. So now let's look at an example. Well, it's thought that the chimpanzees and bonobo species formed because their common ancestors became isolated when the Congo River formed. So here you can see the Congo River. The population that gave rise to the chimpanzees were found at the north of the river. The population that gave rise to the bonobos were found at the south of the river. So once this ancestral population became separated, they couldn't interbreed and this led to the formation of chimpanzees and bonobos. So speciation can occur if the conditions either side of the barrier are slightly different. So at one point, this population of beetles became isolated. Some beetles lived on grassland, whereas others lived on barren land. At the beginning in the ancestral population, there were green and brown beetles. However, after living in the two different areas, you can see that the beetles in the barren land are all brown because it's less easy to see them. And the beetles in the grassland are all green because it's less easy to see them. This is because different characteristics are beneficial in each environment. So different genes will be naturally selected for in a varied population. So in this grassland, these brown beetles are more likely to die. And these green beetles are more likely to survive and pass on their genes. This means that in the future, over many generations, more of the beetles will are green. In the barren land, it's easier to see the green beetles, so they're more likely to die. The brown beetles have an advantage. This means they're more likely to survive and pass on their genes. So in the future, after many generations, more of the beetles will be brown. This buildup of these different characters as the species become so different that they can't reproduce to produce fertile offspring. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.